this is John Cola with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. I'm here in my front yard garden and it is now December time. And uh, finally, I'm just uh, pulling out my peppers and cucumbers. Well, what's left of the cucumbers. I've already started pulling out the tomatoes since they've already not really been that productive. But what I thought I'd share with you guys in this episode is the number one pepper plant you guys will want to dig up and actually overwinter in a greenhouse or indoors that will produce even throughout the winter time. You know, in my climate here, I could just put it in an unheated greenhouse and it'll just still thrive and make a brilliant amount of peppers for me to eat. Now they're quite hot, but there's still some peppers that are going to really do well in the winter. Anyways, let's go ahead and go in for a quick mini tour just on the way to the peppers and I'll show you guys that special pepper plant that I'm going to be uh, digging up. So here, even in December, check it out. like. This is the um, Bolivian cucumbers or achachas, and this guy is still vining out, still producing tons of flowers, and even the like the little fruits are on here. If I look, I could uh, find a fruit. Oh, here's one. Here's a whole bunch. Still making these amazing fruits, and I still do have some seeds left. So if you're looking to buy probably the most hardy cucumber, even though it's been dipping down in the, you know. Uh, like mid 30s hasn't gotten to freezing yet maybe this upcoming week once it freezes this guy's probably toast but even the low in the high 30s mid 30s this guy is still producing these little mini cucumbers mm. really good especially in december let's go ahead and head on in quite good now those cucumbers can get really rambunctious here as you guys can see i got all these vines here that are just growing like wild and uh, even more cucumbers but yeah, these guys are still thriving, whereas my other cucumbers over here are, uh, are finished for the season. So uh, let's head in, and uh, over this first bed, this bed here, used to be all uh, peppers right here. As you guys can see, it's uh, turned into dirt, and I level it out, and we're getting all ready to plant the new uh, fall and winter crops in there. This next bed basically was uh, peppers on either side, and then cucumbers up the middle, and uh, the cucumbers are pretty much finished. And then over in this bed here, this was another bed of peppers that I harvested already, and we got it replanted in uh, lettuce and garlic and some other random uh, uh, brassica family plants, I think some purple cauliflower. Anyways, this is what I really want to show you guys over here, my, uh, my nice pepper bed here, because in this bed, I planted some special peppers, right? Oh, and check it out. Here's one of my cucumbers that are left. They're kind of getting messed up now. That's still edible. I've been juicing these guys. But yeah, I mean, Nothing like the Bolivian cucumbers still producing when these guys are just like, you can see the vines are just toasted out. So I really like how like in nature, uh, different plants finish at different times. So like usually once, once it starts getting cold, pretty much my uh, drew some artichokes, they gotta be cut down to the ground. They don't really don't like the cold. Then maybe my cucumbers are next. Then maybe like the tomatoes are next. And then finally the peppers. And some peppers fare better than others. And that's what I'm gonna share with you guys. Check it out, like these peppers, these are maybe uh, long Italians, uh, still hanging on, even though we get in the mid uh, 30s in the evenings, uh, days right now are in the 60s. You know, nice, nice large uh, Italian pepper. But these guys, you know, once it gets uh, pretty cold, they're not gonna make it. And uh, I do not recommend growing large peppers if you're overwintering them. In the winter, they need a lot of sun and whatnot and nice weather to produce nice large peppers like this. Luckily this is for mostly when it's warmer and now it's just finally ripening up. So if you do want to grow the peppers uh, in overwinter them, then I would recommend, you know, maybe like a Sereno uh, style pepper or even smaller peppers than that. But I have a special variety that I want to introduce you guys to that I have had videos on in the past. So now I want to share with you guys the pepper plant that I will be saving and overwintering in my unheated greenhouse in my zone nine so it's this guy right here uh, this is known as the manzano pepper uh, also known as ricotto pepper they come in a few different colors they come in like yellow red and orange and they're a really nice pepper um, even despite the mid 30s we've been into now now it doesn't like a frost i mean maybe if it gets down to like 32 for an hour or two it'd probably be all right because these, uh, this pepper plant is from uh, you know, the South America in the altitudes where it's used to actually staying cold you know, for a long period of time. And that's where it really does well. You know, in the desert garden, 
you know, where it's 100 degrees plus, these plants do not like it. They like it cooler. So if you live in like the coast of Oregon or someplace where it's kind of cooler, especially in the evenings, because peppers generally like it, you know, hot in the evenings, this is the baby for you that's gonna produce some nice, fairly hot peppers actually. If I remember, I'm, I'll put a link down below to the video where actually I tasted these peppers that I overwintered in my garden. I think I had uh, ripe peppers in maybe like January, which was really cool. And I tried a pepper for the first time on camera and man, that thing lit up my mouth. It's actually quite a funny episode uh, just to think about and then actually even to watch. But yeah, these guys, uh, even despite the mid thirties, it's still flowering. So you guys could see some of the beautiful purple flowers right there. I mean, it still has lots of flowers. I mean, this is when it flowers, man, when it's the nights are cooler. It doesn't, it doesn't make fruit like for most of the summer until it starts to cool down in the evenings and the days are cooler also. In addition, we got some fruit set already, you know, despite it still going into flowering, wanting to produce more fruit. You know, we got some nice fruit set. We'll show you guys some of the nice, uh, you know, uh, bell pepper shaped fruits there on the screen. Now these are unripe fruit. Of course, you could harvest your peppers green. I always encourage you guys to harvest your peppers at full color, at full ripeness. Once again, you know, they could be red, orange, or yellow. I'm not sure which variety this is because I didn't label it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, what I'm gonna do now is actually just uh, dig up all the uh, non-Manzano peppers in this bed and then we're gonna have room to dig these guys up and put them into nice, uh, maybe uh, five gallon or even larger size pots and we're gonna go ahead and uh, pull them in the greenhouse for the winter. So I'm gonna get doing that. We'll come back at you when I got them all potted up. All right, so as you guys can see, I got the bed cleared out here and what I'm doing now is actually potting up my uh, Manzano peppers in uh, about five gallon pots. Uh, the bigger the pot size, the better. This is all I kind of like had laying around. I think I might have like one spare 15 gallon that I'll pot the special plant up into but uh, they're going into this size. So for overwintering, you know, there's two main reasons why you might want to do it. Uh, number one reason is just to keep the plant alive over the winter and maybe not have it produce uh, fruits for you. So that next season you could actually plant the live roots that's already, you know, a nice big mass into your garden and have it sprout up and you'll get peppers sooner rather than later the next season. I'm doing a little bit differently, I'm growing them. I want to let them just uh, continue to grow and continue to make peppers for me in my greenhouse. You know, if you're doing the former, you may want to like uh, trim the plant back massively, um, you know, to minimize the amount of growth on there. Cause you know, moving a plant out of a raised bed where it's nice and happy into a five gallon pot, definitely probably gonna be some transplant shock. So what I'll show you guys next is actually how to minimize the transplant shock by, uh, you know, trying to dig up the biggest root ball as possible and we'll show you guys my specific techniques to do it uh, over at the next one I'm digging up. So now I'm ready to uh, pot this Manzano pepper into one of the five gallon pots. So here's a few tips for you. Number one, you wanna have two pots ready. I'll be thinking, John, wait, this is only going into one pot. Why do you need two pots ready? All right, so you want one pot that's probably filled with a good potting soil mixture like I have in there um, that's uh, gonna drain well, you know, not retain too much water. Peppers don't like it too wet, actually. Um, up to the soil level where you think you're gonna pull out the big root ball. So the root ball is probably gonna go down maybe almost halfway into this, and then I'll set it on top of some new uh, potting soil that the new roots could grow down into. So that's what you wanna have uh, available. This is the donor pot. And then of course you wanna have a secondary pot with just potting soil because uh, once you pull out the root ball, it's not gonna fill the other pot completely. So we're gonna take some of the stuff out of here and uh, just uh, you know fill it in around the seams. So uh, to do this, you know, since I am using smaller pots, I'm not gonna use a full size shovel, plus it kind of gets uh, really big and awkward to deal with unless you're maybe transplanting into a 15 gallon or larger size pot. I got this nice little handy dandy uh, shovel. It's a Craftsman, but it's a, like a little mini shovel. I found this perfect for uh, doing transplants and doing a lot of things around the garden. Uh, yeah, I think I got it on sale for like uh, five or 10 bucks. Definitely a really good investment. So uh, we're gonna, just gonna come around the base of the plant and uh, you know, I kind of like to take the circumference of the pot and kind of basically uh, uh, carve out with my shovel, you know, just a circle around the plant about the same size. You want to make this as wide as possible because you want to get the most root ball as possible in the pot. Uh, this is going to ensure the plant has the least amount of transplant shock. The less roots you could actually cut off and damage, the uh, higher probability of success you're going to have. So well, we're gonna go ahead and pull this drip line back and uh, maybe go down right in here. 
and uh, use my foot here and uh, shove that into the ground like straight down. Then I wiggle it back and forth, hold the ground down, come up, and then we're going to go ahead and make our uh, circle going around. All right, wiggle it back and forth, hold the ground, pull it up. This is not rocket science, man. Anybody could do this. Worst thing that's going to happen if you don't do it right, and then you'll learn how to do it better, is a plant won't make it. No big deal. That's why I'm doing 11 of these today. I'm sure a good percentage will make it. All right, put it down. All right, more than halfway around our full circle here. All right, coming up. I think we got one more to complete our circle approximately. So now you guys want to take your shovel and actually just uh, put it down in there and you're going to basically uh, put it down as deep as you can, even deeper than it was before. Gonna rock it down. Ugh. Oh, and then we're going to get our transplant pot ready. And then we're basically going to pivot this up, you know, use leverage. I learned about that in uh, grade school. <laughs> All right, leverage it up. And then uh, once we got this big thing out, I kind of hold it on the shovel, and then I kind of very carefully uh, make sure like the, the height, appropriate height for the amount of sole we got in there. And we'll kind of maybe scoot this back. And then uh, very carefully place it in the shovel, um, into the pot. And uh, don't remove the shovel yet. What we want to do is we want to then use that other secondary pot of uh, soil grab a handful of soil and you're gonna fill in around the edges and we're gonna push the soil down the edges to uh, fill up all the nooks and crannies in the pot and also that's why I said do not remove the shovel yet because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the, uh, the soil and put it behind the shovel because if I just let the shovel go then all the soil is gonna uh, you know fill the pot so uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, get this done. All right, once we got the soil out or in, then we're going to go ahead and carefully uh, remove our shovel. Then I like to give the, uh, the pot shakedown. All right, I'm shaking you down. This is to basically settle all the soil down into the pot. Uh, the other thing you want to remember when transplanting, in uh, most cases, not all, is you want to try to keep the level of the soil that was uh, of the original plant uh, the same level. So like if the plant soil came up to here, don't you know overfill it to here. In the case of peppers, I could do that. Tomatoes, you could do that. Um, but I always like to keep the same level. Uh, some plants are especially sensitive, and if you feel the level too high, you're going to get a stem rot. So uh, let's just go ahead and put that in. Shake it down. And then I like to push in around the edges. That's where I filled in. And uh, I always like to leave a little bit of gap between the ledge or the edge of the pot and the soil level. Uh, because if you fill up the soil too high and you're watering, it's going to overflow. So I like to leave it a, a good inch and maybe even more. But not too much because if you leave too much space, then you're missing out on soil that you could have where the roots could be growing. All right, so I think this guy's done. I got about another nine to go. <laughs> I might come back at you when I'm all finished. So as you guys can see, got all 11 of these guys potted up. I actually finished it last night when it was getting dark, so I thought I'd finish up this video for you guys today. Um, you know, I potted these guys up after I got them in the pots. I watered them. That's very important. Water them after putting them in the pots. And uh, now the next morning, you know, you'll notice that some of the leaves are kind of droopy on these guys. Right? Some are more droopy than others. Some are actually, uh, you know, not very affected. Maybe some of those guys back there. But this is normal, you know, after transplanting. You know, the, the plant has literally been picked up and moved. And if you picked up all your stuff and moved in one night, you'd be a little bit frazzled too, right? So don't worry if your plants look like this, you know, hopefully some of them will come back and some of them may not. And if, it, if they don't come back, that's all right, because you know what? I got extras. And I always want you guys to plant insurance, you know, plant two or three of the same kind of plant just to ensure that you will be able to keep those genetics. If you're transplanting, you know, transplant a couple, transplant an extra one, just in case. You could always have too much than too few. That's a lesson I learned with having a brother. Yeah, anyways. 
So if you guys enjoyed this episode learning about what pepper plant I'm overwintering and why, um, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. Also be sure to share this with somebody that is also trying to overwinter their peppers. This is the one that I like the best uh, for cool weather. Also, this is good for people that grow in cool weather and want some hot peppers that don't generally produce if it's not hot enough out. Also, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge, over 1,200 videos now on this YouTube channel. And uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button right down below to be notified of my new and upcoming episodes that have coming out about every uh, three to four days. You never know where I'll show up, what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel. And uh, so once again, my name is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep on growing. All right, this is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you, and we're here getting in finally to my end of my summer season. As you guys can see behind me, I still got lots of pepper plants over on this bed, but this bed right here used to be pepper plants, and actually I just